coffee from my dad. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> Just scrape it, out of, it. scrape it out of the bottom. Oh. Yeah, that's a plus one for you right there. Where you get your name on? Um, so I'm, I'm Olivia Boffman. This is my third year of 4-H. I'm 17 years old. And I'm doing my presentation on Meredith Gray's battle with Purpura Hemohagia. Hemorrhagia. Hemorrhagia. Is that? Yeah. I've, I've been trying to practice the word and I keep messing it up. Tough one. Um, so leave that up well, real quick so I can write all this stuff down. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you can pinpoint it. I'm going to write a bunch of stuff down. <laughs> She's six years old and she's a Beale and Mustang. And my neighbor got her as like a tip horse to train and she was perfectly fine. She was, yeah, she was doing everything good. Um, okay. So starting out, she had no symptoms. She, um, there was no other sick horses. She was just acting fine. Like we worked with her the day before anything happened. She was perfectly fine running around everything and she was acting completely normal till one day she um she had swollen legs we came up and she had swollen legs a bloody nose she was limping this one not so she was limping her um her legs were so swollen that um, blood was leaking out of her skin so wow. yeah so and like her ankles behind her um under her fetlocks were like like bloody so we thought she got caught in something the fencing was fine there was no sign of distress anywhere so we just we had no idea so we took her to the vet that morning and then so we did a lot of research we went to the vet we did some blood tests and um it came out to be the purpura hemo, hemorrhagia, I forgot how to say it. It's right. Hemorrhagia. Um, so it came out to be that. And we had no idea about it, so we had to, we had to research it a lot. The vet didn't give us much info about it. He didn't, he didn't even tell us what it was. We researched it and we sent a link to him about it could be this. And he's like, oh yeah, it is that. And he didn't tell us what it, that it was. So we had no idea about it. We and then, yeah, here's a picture of like her face, super swollen. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so, purpura hemorrhagia is swelling of the blood vessels after strangles, or typically after strangles, but we had no idea she had strangles because she didn't show any, any shy signs of strangles. And it's not contagious at all either, the purpura, but the strangles is very contagious. So we had to move her into a um, separate pen because in, and then we had to spray all the pens down with like bleach water mix to just try to make sure none of the other horses got sick and it is a improper immune response so it harms the vessel walls so um, the vessels they leak and then the leaking causes all the swelling and just tissue so and then her face was super swollen and um, only one third of the horses with this survive. So she was she was lucky. Um, but when her face got swollen, we had to camp out and watch her to make sure she didn't lay down and suffocate from all the swelling. So we camped out and woke up like every hour to check on her, make sure she was still breathing okay and everything. And then with treatments, 
So there's a whole bunch of different um, antibiotics, different medicines we gave her. So the corticosteroids, the, it's the, that's the methazone. So it just eases the immune reaction and it helps kind of stop all the blood vessels from leaking and all that. So, um, and that was intravenal. So um, my neighbor would have to go in every morning and give her a shot up on her neck. And then um, the sulfur trimethoprim is an antibiotic. And this antibiotic we got in like a, a little pill so we could crush it up and feed it with applesauce. So we got, her neck was getting really bumpy. We were giving her so many shots a day. And then the methocarbamol relaxed the muscle tremors. So um, her muscles got very tense and like her, near her front leg, her muscle would like tremor. It was like aching. So we started giving her like muscle relaxers. And then the phenylbutazone, you, that's just anti-inflammatory. It helps take down the swelling, helps ease its pain. So we gave her that. And then the penicillin. So this was in like a pill form and a powder. We gave her the pill and the powder and we fed it with applesauce. The penicillin was in IV and we gave that in the neck twice a day, morning and night. And then we cold closed her swelling, kind of take the swelling down every, like twice a day, every day. And then nose tubing. So with all the dead, after all the swelling, there were all the dead cells. So we had the vet come and I think it was around every day for a week. She came and gave her like an, an anesthetic and would put a tube up her nose and pump a whole bunch of water to filter the kidneys. So all the cells didn't like clog up the kidneys and have her go into kidney failure. So <coughs> that was the treatment. And then the after effects, <coughs> she like the dead muscle cells, like I was saying with the kidneys. So we had to watch that. And then um, she lost a lot of weight. She was getting really skinny. She looked really skinny. Like in this picture, she's like super skinny and just kind of, just kind of looks like skin and bones. And then she lost hair from the swelling. So like right here, and she like on her legs and under her chin. And in her mouth, there was like skin, like dead skin stuck in there. And then lots of skin. So. Under her fetlocks on all four feet behind her pasterns, the skin just sloughed off. And we, this is what it looked like before we had the vet come and kind of clean it out. But we have to, we were watching it for proud flesh and we had to get little razors right here and shave off all the bumps. So we, cause we didn't want it to heal. And then we cover it with the diapers and wrap it up and and then in this you can see on her hoof you can see right where she got sick like it's like you can see the growth line on her hoof and yeah she lost yeah all four feet except like this back one right here you can see the indents we were thinking about casting it but we didn't want to keep kicking her leg so we ended up not casting it but yeah, that one was really the vet could see her tendons in the foot because it was so deep, yeah. And then with the recovery, we started feeding her like double and then lunging her to kind of build back some more muscle and wrapping her legs. And so with wrapping the legs, we would get gloves and then get um, like wipe, wipe it off with iodine and water kind of mixture, like kind of scrub off all the gross stuff. And then if we need to shave it, we would shave it and then tap it off with, um, dry it off with gauze sponge. And then get some of the like surgical pad kind of things and put it there and then put the diaper and then wrap it with vet wrap. And we, and then the back feet, we would get duct tape and kind of make it a waterproof. 
the back feet were the worst. And they gave us different ointments. So we have like the sulfur suited dye cream. And then they just had different ones to slow down the crown flush so it wouldn't rapidly grow a lot. And like we found out with giving like, if you put Neosporin on it and waited, like maybe two days, a whole bunch of crown flush would come back. But the other stuff, it would just slow it down, but we had to use it a lot less because um, it was slowing your tube down. Like it wasn't growing. It was getting really, it was slowing down a lot. And then now we just, we got this new stuff, the Underwood Horse Medicine, which caused it, you need to put baking powder on it. And it kind of like, you're not supposed to wash it off, so it makes like a protective layer around the foot, and then we don't wrap them anymore, so they, because the hoof was getting really moist, it was like kind of peeling off at the top. Oh. Yeah. And then, summary, there's a lot of different problems, so it's good to just watch for signs. So, we had no idea, no one that we talked to in Paige or any of the vets has never seen the disease she had or like after effect to a shingle. Um, and no one's ever seen that. And my neighbor, um, he had a horse. They thought he got sick from a snake bite. But then once they saw what happened to our horse and he's like, that looks a lot like what happened to my horse, but they didn't treat him for it and he ended up passing away. Yeah, so he was, he's thinking that he might've had the same thing, but um, it's just good to just know what like if you see something you know what it is and you can treat it fast because if we caught it any later I don't think she would have survived and she's gaining weight now her feet are almost healed and yeah I'm going to start just working on her saddle and, and on ground work and all that stuff with her and yeah that's the end of my presentation do you have any questions yeah I have a question in regards to the the hoofs there um is that a what you would call thrush or is thrush under the hoof? Is that on top of the hoof? Yeah, this and is. That's, that's on top of the hoof? Right? Yeah, okay. it's on top of the hoof. So it's not, not the lower? So yeah. thrush would start? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is strangles? Yes. Um, it's a, oh, I have it in my head. It's um, a infection. I think it's like a, it's kind of like strep for people for horses okay and it's an infection but it's like highly contagious and the horses will get lumps under their all right neck. yeah okay so it's it's uh it thinks it's like strep throat yeah for I mean, horses yeah yeah and it's it's like it was something we were they got a horse and we thought it might have had it because it had lumps under there but we we have no idea if that one had it but if it did it could have passed it on to um, Meredith Gray. All right. But yeah, it's it's just something to watch out for if you like see lumps on your horse's neck or anything. Okay. Yeah. So there's a good ending to the story, right? The yeah. horses get better. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna think I have to go outside and hang myself. Right. So <laughs> I was like, I would have brought her if I knew I could have brought her. Christy told me she's like, you could have just brought her outside, but oh, yeah. That's good. And why did you pick Meredith Gray? Um. Well, I. My neighbor um, mentioned it because I couldn't figure out a name and usually I name my horses like um, musical terms. So I have like lyric, melody, crescendo, or endo. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, there's not really any music terms that kind of match her. And then she was like, what about Meredith Gray? Because she's a mare and she's gray. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So we're like, and then it's so funny how she's the one with the most medical issues and she's named after a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I wasn't sure if that had to do with it. Yeah, no, no, yeah. That the, the mare and the gray, that's cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really cute. Uh, so we just glad your horse is getting better. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's definitely. She, um, well, like, my mom will feed her before I get out there to feed my other horses, and she'll eat it fast, and then she'll just beg for more food. Like, she hasn't been fed yet, and she, like, taps her foot on the bar. Oh, <laughs> that is so cute. But she always, she always gets double fed because I don't know that she's been fed yet, so she gets fed again because she acts like she hasn't been fed. 
and we're like, did you feed Mary? And my mom's like, yeah. <laughs> and then I just fed her. Yeah. Sounds like the horse has got you guys trained. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, where are you located? Here in Page? Are yeah, I'm over here? like down the street at the ranch. Yeah. At the ranch house? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have, you're have behind your house. You have yeah. your horses yeah. behind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's yeah. great. It's always best to have them right in your backyard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We could just walk back there. You see more. Mm -hmm, you definitely do. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. She was when she first got sick. She was over at my neighbor's, and I, I didn't even know. Like I didn't even look over there to see her. So I wouldn't have known if anyone told me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you said that the neighbor next to you, his horse, had died, but he thought it was a snake bite. Do you think there's any chance that that disease might have came from his ground? Um, or I. Ground? No, I don't think so okay. because. Well, the disease, it's not contagious. Okay. Yeah, and the, so there's like my neighbor, the one that the Meredith Gray was at, there's me and then my other neighbor, which was the one the horse was sick at. Okay. So there's like a whole yard and there's, I don't think there's any way it could have been So if the, if the uh, physician would have started, uh, for the vet, would have started the, the corticosteroids much, much sooner, right? Could this have all been stopped? Um, I definitely think that her legs still would have, the skin still would have came off. All right. Because they were just swollen when we first okay. found her. All right. But I think. I it's an immune response, right? It's a horse. It's a horse's immune system just overreacts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So. Right. I think I don't. I don't know. Maybe her face wouldn't have swelled as much if we started it right away, but. Right. I don't think it would have changed much. Yeah. It's like, it's just so like, like no one's ever seen it before. Can you bring them closer? Can we get yeah. Okay. Oh. oh my goodness gracious, look at that poor thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when we first like looked at her feet, so these were like week four or anything, and uh, like, the skin, I don't know if you can tell, but it's like stuck here, but then yeah. all the rest is like off. Yeah. So my neighbor got like a pair of like fabric scissors because that's all that could cut it. And we kind of like cut it down to where it's stuck. So it's like not a whole bunch of like hair hanging. So you're saying from from here to up, up here is how long it took. The growth for the, for the illness is what you were saying, Shane? It yeah. shows the illness right here or does it show the illness? Um, I think that like right where it kind of changes uh -huh. is when she got sick okay. and then this new growth is kind of like her like getting like, better. better. Yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And she's like, she's, I mean, she's really calm. Like I can kneel down and put her foot on my um, leg and just like wrap it up and like she'll let us shave the spots and she just stands there. So like she'll just let us shave them down. Oh, it's good. She knows. Good yeah, and I'm thinking, I think, I'm pretty sure the vet said that when it swelled up, the nerves might have got messed up and damaged. Oh. So I don't know how much she can feel. Cause sometimes she definitely can feel it. Like she'll definitely kind of like lift her leg up. But then um, other times she just, she'll stand there while you just scrub away with the razor. Scrub all the bumps. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh huh. Thank you. Thank you. Can I take your hand? Oh, okay. sure. <laughs> Thanks. Uh huh. Thank you. Yeah, you it's the um, Arizona Tip Challenge. This one's a beauty for you. Tip Challenge? Yeah, the you have a hundred days to train a wild mustang. Wow. Yeah. So I this is I wore the wrong one. I thought I wore the one I won, or I won this one too, but. The other one, so I had 100 days to train this wild yearling Mustang, and then I, um, you compete with it, and I won the youth champion. So I like won a saddle and a belt buckle and a thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh huh.